Hi everyone, good morning. So here we are at Base Leg Friday morning and we're just looking for something to do. Quite candidly, what we're gonna do today is go to school on how to balance a propeller. So we're gonna use the DynaVibe uh, GX3 dynamic balancer. And we're gonna walk everybody through two key areas here, how we set up the engine and then how we actually set up the smart box itself. So the idea is to balance this propeller at cruise RPMs. So some of the propellers we see come through the shop aren't necessarily balanced where the aircraft spends 95% of its time. That's in cruise flight. So that's where we want to balance it. So we've got the pilot in the cockpit. You want to always use the same pilot running the engine or mechanic. So they're looking at the RPMs and we balance it at the exact same time each time. It should take about three runs to get it right. The first run is going to tell us where to put some weights. The second run, we'll put those weights and it'll say, eh, those weren't quite right. Usually on the third run, it'll get it. So we'll see what happens here today. This is not unlike the uh, Lycomings in RVs. So for those of you in the RV community who are watching this, this is a Lycoming engine. It's 300 horsepower turbocharged and it's got the same flywheel. It's got an 11 inches uh, uh, with 12 holes that we can put weights. So the first thing to do, backfire, okay? So uh, here, everybody come close. What we're gonna do, some key things. First off, you wanna pick a blade to be number one blade, okay? What's, how do you determine number one blade? It doesn't matter. What's gonna happen if you come around the backside here, we'll get the camera person over here, Rebecca, you can actually see the reflective tape. And that reflective tape is used to pick up right here on the RPM sensor. So this is an optical sensor. Uh, basically what I do is power up the box and this puts out a little red light and then I'll stick this to the back side of the blade. We also, if you look right here, we also have the sensor for vibration, okay? So what we wanna do is make certain that's 90 degrees to the crankcase when we mount it and as close to the front prop as you can get it. If you look right here on this engine, pretty much stock Lycomings, you can usually pick up the front uh, crankcase bolt there. Just pull it off, make sure the sensor's on the center line, and then if you'll look right here, we'll go ahead and label this number one. We've got 12 holes. We want to label them in the direction of propeller rotation as you're viewing it from the front of the aircraft. So if you back up and you look at the front of the aircraft here, this propeller is going to spin counterclockwise. So that's important to remember number it appropriately, and then when we configure the box, we want to tell it that it's going counterclockwise. If you don't, you're going to be chasing, trying to balance it, because it's going to automatically kind of put it in a clockwise position. Okay? So uh, one of the things you want to make certain of is anything loose on the engine is kind of tightened up. So down here, we've actually uh, just safety wired anything, tied up some hoses, uh, make certain things don't flop around. We've got the cable uh, here to the sensors, cable tied to the engine, and then duct tape to the wing out to the box. So now let's walk out to the box and I'll walk you through some things here. Okay, this is the DynaVibe GX3 sensor. It's really nice in that it provides the solution so we don't have to try and do any math. I know some of you are challenged with that. So <laughs> anyway, just kidding. But here's, let's tell everybody look in and here's some of the things that we do need to configure. Okay, because it's going to print out a report when we're done that actually goes in the logbook. It's part of, uh, especially on uh, certified aircraft, we want to put the sheet in the logbook and make a notation of where the weights are. So if the prop ever comes off, the weights get put back in the same place. So we have the owner here, aircraft end number, the engine, it's a Lycoming, horsepower. So the reason why I'd ask you for horsepower is because we're spinning around a weight, okay, at so many RPMs with so much force, that's how it's going to calculate. So... Basically, you don't need to be that accurate on the horsepower, somewhere in the range. What I'll go do is look at the data plate on the engine. Most of them, like this one is a certified airplane, the data plate is on there and it will tell you it's a 300 horsepower engine at 2,500 RPMs. So most likely that's where we're gonna go ahead and set it up for cruise, okay? The propeller is a hard cell, position is one. And then it says spinner diameter. One of the things I would caution you on is don't use the spinner diameter. You wanna use the diameter where we're gonna be placing the weights because that's how it does the calculation. In this case, if you look, if you measure the diameter of that flywheel, a typical Lycoming flywheel is right about 11 inches on the weights and that spinner could be 12 or 13 inches. 
So if you start, uh, you know, if you use the 12 or 13 inches versus the 11, it's going to have you put lighter weights out there, and it's going to take more runs to figure it out. Okay? Make sense? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is just hit next, okay? And it wants to know the number of blades, okay? You can probably count that high, right? Right? I would say three. Three, good. Yeah, okay. Right. All right, so we're going to tell it three blades, okay? We're going to go to next, and that direction of rotation? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So we're going to go CCW, okay? That looks good. All right, and where's the optical tack on the position from number one blade? It's right there in line, 12 o'clock, right? So we're just going to mark that in line there. The accelerometer is also at the zero degrees. How many locations for weights? Ray, that might be too far for you to count. Darian, okay, it's 12, right? Remember, we numbered the holes 12, right? So that's important because it's going to decide where we can put those weights. Okay, so we've got 12 there. And next, okay, number three. Let's see, we've got three blades, directional rotation. So we're going to accept it. So now it says prepare for the run-up. So in preparing for the run-up, some things I want to talk about. Safety first, okay? Because we're going to be messing with some things. So we want to make certain it's chalked. The pilot should have the parking brake set, okay? We're going to be running up some pretty high power. You want to clear the area in front of the prop, make sure there's no rocks or anything to do some damage, okay? And then really, really most important thing, we're going to be changing weights in between these runs, okay? So it's very important, especially on an airplane like this one that has magneto switches, that whoever's doing this and messing with the prop, you look at that pilot and you make sure you call magnetos are off because we're going to have a hot engine with some fuel in it. You're going to go turn it to move a weight uh, and it could fire on you. Okay, so that's the most important thing I want to make sure everybody understands. I know all of you are used to working on the RVs, typically have keys and you see the key up on the dash. Be prepared. Not all of them have keys. And those switches are really important. It's easy to forget when you're doing this propeller balance. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clear the area. We're going to talk to the pilot. He's going to start the engine up. You want to warm it up, whatever the book says, minimum oil temp and cylinder head temp. Typically 80 degrees for a Lycoming on oil temp and maybe 200 on cylinder head temps. And then we'll look for the pilot to give us a thumbs up that he or she is ready. They'll go to full power, cruise power, not full power, correct myself there. And once they give us a thumbs up, we're going to take a reading. And it takes a few seconds to take that reading. And then we'll tell the pilot to shut down. And we'll let the, uh, do a normal cool down, especially you want to be uh, careful. This is a turbocharged engine, so follow proper cool down procedures. And then we'll apply some weights. All right? Make sense? Any questions? All right. Cool. Go here. So our first one, first one wanted 5.2, and we're going to do a 5.1. Now we need a 2.7. This is going to be a challenge. 2.7. There we go, 2.8. So hopefully everybody can see what's going on here. Our vibration showed 0.13 ips, 
at 350 degrees, and the solution called for two bolts, sunbolt 7 and 6 of 5.2 and 2.7. So a total would be 7.6 at 170. We ended up with 7.7 .7 at 170, so it's only a tenth of a gram off. We're gonna make the next run and see what it tells us. Did it give us too much weight or not enough? No, not enough. This one goes in seven. Hole seven. Mind if I feel that study for a moment? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> so there's bolt six and bolt seven. Vibration. You guys know what an ips is, right? One inch, okay? So we went from 0.13 the first time to 0.07. It usually comes down by about half on one run, and that's what it did. It came down by half. Sometimes on the RVs, they typically, with the two-blade props, they'll start around 0 0.2, 0 0.25 or something, usually much higher. The three blades inherently are a little better, balanced from the factory, so, you know, 0.13. Some people just leave them like that, um, but I know we can do better. So what it's done on the first one, if you remember, it said, let's add some weights on these two holes, right. okay? Because it said the uh, ips per second was at this radial arc, okay? Right. There's not a hole lined up right there, so it splits it, okay. okay? And that's why there's different weights in different holes to kind of move it to where it wants. And you can see it did a bang up job because it was at 350 at 1.13, and it moved it right back down the 350 line by half, right. okay? So now it says, hmm, I used these weights last time, Let's add some different amount of weights in the same holes and see if we can get it to go more towards zero. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. So you always take the weights out between runs and add new weights. They're not additive. Okay. Okay? okay. Make Clear. sense? All right. Clear. Clear. And you're going to hit report okay see the report key hit report it puts it on the card and then you just take the card to the computer put it in and print it off okay 0.03 buddy <laughs> a bug will make a difference you should notice a nice difference when you're flying